Hey guys, it's Nicolas Turmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to be continuing the videos on Era Foundation. I'm going to be focused on item selection, but the way that we're going to be implementing item selection is going to be different. We're going to be using the camera vector origin position and also ray casting array against the objects that we have in the augmented reality scene. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the scene that I created for selection of AR objects with the, basically with the camera origin and doing a raycast. So this is a demo of the scene that I built to my phone. You can see that it has the welcome with instructions and then the point that you see in the center is the reference point that I'm using to do a raycast against the objects in the scene. So I have a distance property that I basically can change through the inspector, tell it how far I want to do this. And I can basically, you know, sit down and, and go back and, and the raycast is actually really, really accurate. So I'm really happy with the result. So what I'm going to show you is how I did this scene in Unity. We're going to be looking at the hierarchy, also how the code works. And it's actually really simple, so don't get afraid about, you know, the code because it's actually very, very, very straightforward. So what I have right now is I have a scene called Selection with Camera Origin. And I have a lot of different scenes that I've been doing, if you have been watching my videos. But this scene specifically does item selection with basically uh, a reference point and that reference point is, is basically set up this way. So I have a directional light and I'm going to walk you through what I have in the hierarchy. So like I said, directional light, AR session, AR session origin, just like I do in every other video. Also, of course, the AR camera because we need the AR camera, the canvas, the event system, and then all the objects that I have in the scene that I show you in the demo just a few seconds ago. So how do I do the selection with the, with the reference point? So what I did is I have a canvas and I have an object called selector. That object has a raw image and I just decided to just use this knob texture and then just change the opacity a little bit of the color. So the raw image has a texture and then the color and then I don't have any materials. And I do have a raycast target. This doesn't really matter because I'm not selecting this. You could basically uncheck that and still will work. So if we go to 2D, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how this works. So if I were to hide this panel, this is the point that you see in the, you know, in the demo that I show you. And what's happening is I'm getting the, basically the point that I have on the canvas and then converting that to a point that I can do, use for raycasting. So just keep in mind that this can be changed to look, you know, however you want it to look. It's just the point that I'm using as a reference as I move my, my, my phone around. So if I enable, I'm going to enable this. And then if we go to the, Actually, let's see, I think it's the, yeah. If I go to the air session origin, I have the, you know, the air session origin script, just like we do on every video, an AR plane manager. And I also have the selection from the camera origin. The air plane manager I'm using so that we know, basically we're creating anchors in the scene. And, and basically so that the, the objects don't move around like crazy. It has a reference of AR. And then I also have the selection from camera origin. So if you look at this component, I have a welcome panel, just like I do in every other video. I also have an array for the place object. So this is just a reference to all of these ones. So it knows how to toggle the selection. I also have an active color and inactive color. So when, whenever that point hits the, basically the object, the raycast collides with the object, I change the color to, to active. And then as soon as we leave that collision, then I change it to inactive. I also have a dismiss button the a reference to the AR camera and I'm going to show you why I need that. Also, if I need to display an overlay and you saw the overlay on every one of these objects, which is the overlay in this case is the label that shows when an object is selected. And then I have also, if I go back to, if I go back to that component and I also have a reference to the selector. So this is really important because I need to know where the location of that selector is so that I can do the raycast like I, I was showing you. So let's go ahead and look at the code and see and see how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Assets, Open C Sharp Project. We're going to go open VS Code. And this is just basically something that I was doing. So I just close out of that. And then the selection from Camera Origin, I show you most of these properties. They're all serializable because I'm exposing them. I'm going to go down and I also have a listener that I attach the Dismiss button on Click Event. 
I have by when I start I select the first object and I make that active so in this case it's gonna be the big sphere that one is the only one active and you can change this if you like if you don't want to have anything active you can just not do this line right here just basically remove it or just remove the change selection object in case you're using the star method we also have the basically the method that dismisses the welcome panel and then what I'm doing here is I'm just saying okay if the welcome panel is still active I'm not gonna do anything as soon as you guys dismiss it or the person who is using the experience dismiss it then we can go through and actually do the raycast so what I did is I didn't want the raycast to get generated on every frame so what I'm doing is I have a generate rate a generate rate after a few seconds so you can change this and I have it right now every two seconds I generate array you can change this to whatever number you want. Just keep in mind that the more frequent that you do that, the more performance hit that you're gonna get. So you can do it every, you know, I would recommend that you do it every maybe half a second or every second. I think that will be enough for people to do a selection. And then, you know, when you do that selection and you and you hit the timer, then we do we basically do the race. So the way that this works is I increment the timer on the L. So if we haven't reached the basically the max then i i keep incrementing and then i think i i think i did this right yeah actually this is the this is the other way around let me normally i think the timer generate right after seconds yeah i think that was a bug a surprise that it was it was working so the way this works is if the timer reaches the max then we're going to be doing a raycast otherwise we're going to be setting the timer to z actually otherwise we're going to increment in the timer so when a timer hits the max then we go through the here and then at the end I set it to zero and then what's gonna happen is we the timer hasn't hit the max so we're gonna go to else we're gonna increment and then so on that way we only do this when we hit you know half a second or a second depending on what you set the max to be so the part that is important here is that we create a ray so I use the AR camera to convert a screen point to a ray I pass in the selector transform position that gets me a ray I also create a raycast hit hit object, which is basically null at this point. And then I just use the physics raycast with the ray that we created. I get the object out if, if there's a collision. And then I get the basically I passing a distance from the camera. So this one is important as well because depending on the experience that you're building, if you don't want this to be that far because this is gonna be 10 meters. So, you know, you can change that value. And that's what I made it serializable so you can play around with that. If something is super far and you don't want your experience to allow, you know, selecting an, an, an object that is that far, just change this value. So that's what this does. And then what happens here is I say, okay, if, uh, if the heat object has a placement object, then I get the placement object. I make sure that it's not null just to make sure that I did get a placement object. And then I just change that object to be the one that is selected. I go through this code to do that. And then the way that this works too, if I do a raycast and the object that I that I selected already is not the one that I'm selecting, then I'm clearing the selection by, by just passing in a null. So if you look at this, this method right here, I have it set as null by default. So the way that it works is it's going to it's going to basically get into the else and then actually it's going to be basically getting here because null does not equal to current, so it's gonna change the selection to false. And then it's gonna change that object to basically be inactive. Otherwise, it's gonna be, it's gonna select the current object as selected and then set that to the active color. So that that's how that part works. And that's basically everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. Oh, also, if you guys wanna look at this in GitHub, make sure that you go to github.com, Dilmer V, and then Unity AR Foundation Essentials. And I just committed that those changes last night. So make sure that you look at this latest commit would happen in December 4, 2019, which is 15 hours ago from recording this video. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned on AR Foundation with item selection, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much guys.